Hey everybody, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader and I'm back talking about book prizes. And I particularly like talking about the Costa Book Awards for a couple of reasons. So firstly, it overlaps with the festive season. The shortlists for each category are announced today and then the winners are announced in January. And it's nice how this, this mood of celebrating great literature uh, overlaps with the, the festive feeling of this season. And uh, it's particularly nice that uh, it, the, the, the award highlights 20 of the best books from the past year. So uh, if we take time off from work over Christmas, as many of us do, uh, it gives us a chance to catch up reading some of the best books of the year. But I also like this prize because it celebrates five different categories of books, including novels, debut novels, poetry, biographies, and children's fiction. And each of the category winners uh, receive a prize of their own, uh, including 5,000 pounds. And then a few weeks after each of the winners in these categories is announced, an overall winner of the prize is announced and receives a whopping 30,000 pounds. It's nice how books are celebrated within their own genre before being pitted against each other uh, to win the overall prize, which you could say is sort of an impossible task because how do you compare novels with poetry or biography, uh, but that's just like part of the fun process, I think, and, like, and why I love book prizes. I've actually been following the prize for a very long time. Uh, so it was first known as the Whitbread Literary Awards when it was first launched in 1971, and then it became the Costa Book Awards in 2006. But I was excitedly following the prize in the year 2000 because that's when I first moved to the UK and it became really aware of UK book prizes and this is one of the the biggest book prizes in the UK and that year uh, the winner in the debut novel category was none other than Zadie Smith for her novel White Teeth who you might have heard of before um, she's gone on to become quite a prominent well-known author <laughs> which is sort of an understatement but uh, but yeah so I, I have my uh, my first edition here signed by the author, very exciting, but also the category winner for the biography in that year of 2000 was Lorna Sage for her memoir Bad Blood and you can see the the sticker there uh, calling this the the Whipbread uh, category winner for biography and Lorna Sage was actually a teacher of mine and I was studying with her at the time uh, when she won this award and this is an absolutely beautiful memoir. I would really highly suggest you read it. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I knew her and she was a massive influence on me. I like credit her as, as being one of the people who really inspired me to come back to literature and find a, a love of different kinds of literature that I hadn't been exposed to before. And it, it's, it's poignant that she won this award because she was very sick in that year uh, when uh, I was studying with her and she sadly died just seven days after she won this award and she found it such a great comfort and uh, a source of pride that, that she won this award so it, it, was, it was so lovely to see but like I said she instilled such a great love of literature in me and and uh, she first introduced me to the author Joyce Carol Oates who many of you know uh, went on to become one of my favorite authors of all time. So this is a book award that means a lot to me and uh, I love how each year it highlights uh, really great interesting different kinds of fiction. So just uh, with this past year uh, the, the winner in the debut novel category was Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine which is been a book which has really divided a lot of readers. Some people really love it and some people uh, have real issues with it and I kind of uniquely like I thought there were some really good really moving parts to it but then other parts of it I, I had real issues with so uh, but I think that those these sorts of books always make the most interesting winners uh, because you know they're great discussion points uh, and also uh, the uh, winner in the novel category was John McGregor's novel Reservoir 13 which is another novel I had a really interesting reaction to where when I was reading it I 
was a bit confused, like I just didn't really see the point of it. But then by the time I got to the end of the novel, I found it so moving and profound and really, uh, it's, it's, it's an extraordinary novel. So I highly recommend that book as well. And the overall category winner of in the past year was Helen Dunmore for her book of poetry, Inside the Wave. And this is another very poignantly poignant award uh, that it was given at this time because Helen Dunmore sadly died uh, last year. So it's great that the prize honored her in this way. Anyway, this whole preamble is a way of saying that I'm really excited to find out what books are listed for the award this year. And I don't know what they are yet because uh, it's, it's Thursday morning and the, uh, the shortlist, the 20 books will be announced this evening on BBC Front Row. Uh, so I'm going to listen in on that and then give my reaction to it. Or maybe I might try to give my reaction as I'm listening to it, but that, that might be a bit complicated because in the past when I've tried to do live reactions to things, like things have gone technically wrong and it's, it's all been a bit of a muddle, but we'll see how it goes. But I'll catch up with you soon to let you know what the shortlist is and what I think. Okay, it's the evening and the announcement is going to be made live on BBC Front Row soon. So uh, I've got that on and I'm listening to it and currently The Archers is on, which is a long-running BBC radio show that I've never listened to and don't really get. It's just about a small farming community, but uh, it's, it's one of those British things that I just, I just don't really understand and never really got into. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, check in and uh, try to record my live reaction to it, but, uh, but I fully expect that I won't have heard of most of the books on the biography or uh, children's fiction and probably not the poetry category either, just because, you know, I mainly read fiction, that's sort of my thing. So I'm most interested in the debut and the novel categories, but, uh, but you know, you, we never know. My, uh, I might know these books and uh, react to them, so, uh, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, here we go. It's about to be announced. So I'll turn up the sound a bit. literary prizes in this country, and unlike the open only to authors who are based in the UK and Ireland. Mm. The Costas also have a reputation for picking accessible, popular reads. Uniquely, mm. the prize has five categories, novel, poetry, biography, I already explained all this to you. <laughs> Each category will have a winner, and one of those five winning books will win the overall Costa Book of the Year. Well, with me to discuss each of the shortlists are literary critics Alex Clark and Tony Lustig. Welcome both of you. I love Alex Clark. Okay, She's so amazing. I am going to start by reading out really a great journalist. shortlisted books for, in the novels category, and then I'll ask you what you think. <gasps> novels. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Pat Barker, The Silence of the Girls. Yay! Retelling of the I love The Silence of the Girls. Ah, oh. so good. Sally Rooney, Normal People. Yay, Normal People, yay! Ah, <laughs> oh, so amazing. Ah, oh, great. Also long-listed for the Booker Prize. The son of a famous painter growing up in his father's shadow. Oh. And Donald Ryan, From a Low and <gasps> From a Low and Quiet Sea. Yay, also long-listed for the Booker Prize. And, ah. Oh. Syrian refugee. Or emotionally scarred for different reasons. Donald Ryan's Alex, writing. Your reaction to that so amazing. Well, I think the, the, the kind of big name that stands out is Pat Barker. She was completely overlooked for the book. I didn't make yes. it on the list. And yet that book, which is her first uh, uh, step away from the first or second world wars or contemporary life back in to the Trojan War, right back in history, has had enormously good reviews. Uh, so I, I guess that's the big standout name. Um, Sally Rooney and Dona Ryan, also from the book, a long list, two Irish writers, uh, I think they were both uh, pretty fated when those books came out. <laughs> and I think, I suppose the, the name that's going to be least familiar there is Tom Rackman's. Yeah, I haven't heard of Tom Rackman. Yeah, I mean, accessible and popular perhaps, but I mean, these are all very serious novels and very challenging novels. Very and good. I, I would say, yes, Pat Park is probably the most well-known on the list, but for me, it's all about... I'm glad that there's one that I don't know and haven't read because, uh, you know, it gives me a chance to explore the, the prize more. And, you know, that's always a good thing. It has done it really has well. Done I mean, very well. There are people who don't like it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It. I'm not one of them. No, no, but no. But if you it, like it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of obsessed with it. It's been it. hugely hyped, which, which in a way, would, you know, contrary wise, may want to turn against it, but it, I, I think it lives up to the hype. No, it does. 
Sally Rooney. Rooney. Sally Rooney. Okay. Mm, it could be Pac Barker, though, I think. We are now going to go to the biography uh, category. Very interesting okay. range of books here. Not what you call classic biographies. Can you please announce the shortlist for us? I shall. Viv Albertine Ooh. to throw away on a. Oh, I have that. Interesting. Bart I've been wondering that. The Cutout Girl, uh, which is a story of uh, a girl who is fostered mm. uh, to save her from the Nazis. Uh, Raina Wynn, The Salt Path, a tale of a, a husband and wife who take a long walk in um, adversity. And Benjamin Zephaniah, The Life and Rhymes of Benjamin Zephaniah, oh. uh, which I think speaks for itself. Huh. Yeah, and they, they really I know of that, but I haven't well, don't have a copy. Wow. I remember, Toby, I don't know if you do, we, uh, we sat here last year, maybe even the year before that, and said, what is this category now yes. doing? Yes. And not in the sense to kind of pour scorn on any of the books or diminish any of the books that have been shortlisted, but where is that kind of big, monumental life, the Hilary yeah, Sperling on Matisse, biography. for example, the big biography, The Cradle to Grave Life? I think it's true that this represents a kind of, reflects a sort of change in the publishing scene, but it's also interesting that those books just aren't featuring anymore, are yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. And just it's all about memoirs. And yeah. But, mm. I mean, well, uh, Toby, have you got a particular favourite? Where's Michelle Obama's <laughs> Becoming? I do know Viv Albertine. I absolutely love her. So she, a former... A former um, I've heard such a good thing about the uh, Viv Albertine's uh, memoir, so, yeah. yeah. Really yeah. would like to read it. Um, close, close, close. Uh, music, 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 boys, 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 came out a couple of years ago. It was absolutely brilliant. It was about her life in the slits. And this this is about her later life and her early life. It's about being a mother. It's about being a daughter. It's very painful. A sister. A sister. It's, 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 it's raw very, yeah. and angry, isn't and it? it's yeah. really sunny as well. It's really what funny. about Raina Wynn's The Salt Path? This is a fascinating story, isn't it? Well, this hmm. is, again, this is a husband and wife. They lose their home. Um, Raina Wynn's husband, Moth, gets a terrible medical diagnosis. And so what do they do? They, they decide to walk the South Coast path. I mean, I wouldn't in that circumstance. <laughs> it wouldn't be what I'd do, but they did. And this is really their story of, of doing that. It's and, a kind of uh, yeah. triumph in the face of adversity, as it were. And very briefly, Toby, um, Bart Van Eyck, yes, the he's, cutout girl. He's a best known mm. as a Renaissance literary scholar, so he writes a lot about Shakespeare and Spencer. And this is, um, this is a story of this Jewish girl who, who was taken in during the Second World War. Uh, in Holland by by his grandparents, and it's about that, but also about the subsequent falling out she had with the family. And he goes on this investigation and, and, and finds her, and becomes very close friends with her. And it's it's beautiful. Wow. Now the next category is poetry. Three out of four are. I wonder if I'll credit any of these. All those three are published by Faber. Good bit of talent mm. spotting there. Toby, can you announce? Oh, I hope Soho is on it. Collections on the shortlist. Okay. Please, please, so. Zaffa Cuniel, Us, J. O. Morgan, Assurances, oh. Richard Scott, Soho. Yay, Soho! Sullivan, Three Poems. Um, again, oh. I absolutely love this list. Um, Do I know? There was a bit of a okay. Twitter storm recently, a couple of days ago. Rose Tremaine had a pop of contemporary poetry and said it yes. was a bottom state. Mm. And I would point Lots of bad to reactions to that. Respect, a very fine novelist who I'm a big fan of, and he also has a memoir out this year, um, mm. to this list because she... there, are, there are three fantastic debut collections. As you and and Rose Tremaine was complaining mm. that, that modern poets don't follow rules. The, the, I mean, all of these follow rules. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could look yeah. at Hala Salam, for example. She's another. Very odd argument yeah, she's from she's Rose Tremaine, she's, she's, who's, she's who's writing I love. She's so. about modernist poetry. Her, 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 her book, Three Poems, it's very formally, you know. Interesting and traditional in some ways. You know, I uh, love this. So, it's, 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 so one poem in New York, one in California, absolutely. one in here. Three different stages mm. of, a, of yeah. a woman's life. It's um, really, it, again, we can, it's really raw, isn't it's it? It's really raw. It's lots of graphic my, sex in yeah, the there's, 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 Can I just I say? Like, my favourite <laughs> line Ooh. came from Hannah uh, Sullivan's book, which is describing a cocktail in New York that tastes of whipped cream and kidneys. And I just thought that oh. is any <laughs> cocktail in any bar in the world. <laughs> Me over this Absolutely. list, they're all so completely. Yeah. And then you've got Richard Scott, brilliant. Soho again. Soho. Uh, uh, yes. Graphic Absolutely poems about of, being. Yes, yeah, yeah, some quite graphic, yeah, but yeah. really yeah. emotional yeah. too. It's about the sense of shame that, that that was forced on him as a gay man, mm. and it's about um, and it's, it's about sex. It's it's uh, about history. Anger, hurt, defiance, joy. It's 
brilliant. It's well. beautiful. And, and, you know, artistic oh, politics so and, happy. And, and, and graphic sex. I, 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 well, not exactly. <laughs> no, actually, okay, I should say, not exactly. I, did, I, did, I didn't find that. Yet. In some <laughs> way, J. O. Morgan, um, uh, who's writing about. Um, his father, nuclear war, 1950s. That's sort of the odd one out, isn't it? Perhaps, yeah. He, he's, mm. he's the one who's been around a while. I think this is his sixth book. And he specialises, mm. he writes book-length poems. So he, this, yes, this, it's, this, a, this is, it's a short book, it's a short of, book. of poems with very short lines. I mean, yeah. Quite often very end-stop lines. Really, really interesting, yeah, I thought. Absolutely. Mm. Now, the shortlist for the Costa First Novel Award. Ooh. And the four books are... Very curious about Pieces this. of Me by Natalie Hart. This is set in America and looks about it looks at the effects of the Iraq I don't think I know this. On, uh, the two protagonists. Meet Me at the Museum and Youngston. This ah. is an epistolary novel hmm. between a woman and a Yes, I've heard of this. I've been curious to read this. Is 70. Oh. Stuart Turton, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Ah. Describes a dark comic Who just won the, won the Books in My Bag uh, Readers <laughs> Award. <laughs> And Elisa Lodato, An Unremarkable Body. This begins with Elisa a pathologist's Lodato. report on know this body and her daughter piecing together uh, what happened to her mother. Um, Alex, wow. a lot of experimenting with form in this category. Yeah, very much so. I mean, as you were hmm. saying, the, the, the Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, it is a story told over and over again. Elisa Lodato's book is, is, is a, a woman, a daughter trying to piece together a mother's life from her autopsy report. Um, Anne Youngson's mm. book is, is basically an epistolary novel in, in lots of ways. She, do you know, she is 70, but she had an entire career in the car industry. She's a senior manager. Yeah, she basically industry. ran cars. <laughs> in this wow. I think it's and so inspiring. Isn't it? That's a great <laughs> story. Well, I, want, I want to hear her memoir, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Toby, were you grabbed by this shortlist? No, I'm afraid I wasn't. Um, sorry to say that. I, I was pretty underwhelmed by this list, um, with all due mm. respect to, to all of the novelists. I mean, the, the Stuart Turton book, it's, it's interesting, it's tricksy, it's clever, it's this complex intellectual murder mystery set in the 1920s, the golden age of detective fiction. I've heard it's so good, so much fun to, to read. And the Anne Youngson book, I mean... Wonderful story, you know, to, to write a debut novel age 70. It's very sweet, and that does sound like Dan with faint praise. I think it's a bit it falls yeah. into that sort of <laughs> new, in, like, invented category, uplit. Yeah. You know, it's a it's, very... It's, 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 it's a little a, bit too gentle for my taste. Rachel Joyce type. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Again, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be pressing any of these books in, into, into my friend's hands, but, but I will, well, and, and, you know, that's good for them. And finally, <laughs> we have the shortlist for the Costa uh, Children's I expect to um, not know any out. books on this list. David Almond, The Colour of the Sun. He's, of course, best known as the hmm. author of Skellig. Um, he's twice won this category before. Oh. Candy Gourlay, Bone Talk. Uh, the author of this was born in the Philippines, and the book is inspired by stories hmm. uh, that she grew up with. Matt Killeen, Orphan Monster Spy. This is about a little Jewish girl who goes undercover as a spy in an elite Nazi school. Wow. And Hilary uh, uh, Mackay, The Skylark's walk, War, sorry, this is about a family growing up in the shadow of the First World War. Um, Toby, huh. uh, quite interesting on gender, this shortlist, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's lots of stuff interrogating the different roles boys, boys and girls play. I mean, it's, there's a lot of historical stuff. So we've got the 19th century Philippines, um, World War One, World War II. Um, gender, yes, so you've got this... this Spies, female spy, young female spy. The Skylark's War for me is the, is the standout one, and this um, focus on this character Clary, um, who, who grows up with her brother, sort of uh, the mother's dead, the father's completely uninterested, and that's sort of virtually abandoned. It's, it's about her her coming of age, and she's this very mm. powerful figure, and she ends up going to the, the front in France to, to rescue a cousin. And it's a lot about you know, what girls can what do, girls and what boys can do. It's absolutely great. Um, I, I enjoyed. Uh, from Monster Spy as well. It's an absolutely terrible strap line. It says she may look sweet, but she's a Nazi's worst nightmare. Don't let that put you off. Oh, I like that. Oh, I did think you? That's oh, a great oh, strap really? line. <laughs> yeah, Alex. Whole, I mean, you tell him. No, it's great. It's great. Title. It's I mean, great title. you're right to, to, to pick up on the, the, the gender um, expression, but so much war across mm. these lists. I mean, unsurprising, mm. um, but it does crop up in virtually every category, perhaps. It does. I, I, think, think, I, think, I think with the exception you know, of first novel, I think not with every, the exception of every category. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, interesting to have an, uh, a story from the from the Philippines. So that's we don't absolutely, have to that and also to told from the point of view of uh, a young tribal boy. You know, there are, I think it kind of subverts mm. that old-fashioned, um, you know, sort of outsider colonial coming outsider coming yeah. in tale from mm. you know sort of fifty years ago.
Um, and then, of course, Ooh. David Oldman. Um, but 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 uh, uh, who's well known to everybody? But uh, well, let's uh, wrap up with some predictions because Alex, you mm. called the overall winner for us uh, last year, which was Alan Dunmore. Really? You did. You did. You did. <laughs> Psychic Alex. Uh, who, 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 are you, who are you going to call for? This, who do you reckon this year? Oh my goodness. Well, you Ooh. see, I'm slightly going back on I called Rooney for the novel, but then I think if Pat Barker wins the novel, she'll win the, I wonder if Viv Albertine will win. Well, mm. yeah, mine too, Albertine yeah. or Rooney. Um, so mm. why don't I say Rooney, you say Albertine, and then see who's right. No, <laughs> <laughs> Alex Clark and Toby Lister, thank you. And the category winners will be announced on Front Row on the 7th of January and will announce the overall winner of the Costa Book of the Year on Tuesday, the 29th. Earlier this wow. Year, John. wow, so there we go. That was the announcement of the shortlist. And uh, yeah, wow. Um, so I, I really don't know, um, haven't read any of the books in the first novel category, which I was expecting to have read. I read quite a lot of debut fiction, so I was expecting to have read, read at least some. But, uh, but yeah, that was a, a surprise. And, uh, but yeah, I've been really wanting to get to The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcast. So good. Uh, Good uh, excuse to to read that and uh, and but yeah what a a great group of books for the novel category and and I'm so glad to see because I love Donald Ryan's writing so much and I'm glad to see uh, him get more recognition like this because I I like a lot of people uh, at least on on BookTube and stuff have been talking down from a low and quiet sea and and I'm I was a huge fan of it I I just think it's a really incredibly beautiful book and I hope you do too if you get to read it. So uh, let me know what you think of the list. Have you read any of these? Are you um, interested in reading any of them? And yeah, like there's been a huge amount of praise for Sally Rooney's novel and I'm so glad to see uh, the Pat Barker's book get some more recognition. So uh, so yeah, uh, exciting to see what happens. Uh, so let me know what you think and I will speak to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.